The 13 year old who beat Tetris gets told to go outside by a news presenter and something unheard of has happened. An MMO server made by fans doesn't get shut down, instead it gets given an official license. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. Now first of all allow me to address the elephant in the room, his name is Steve and he's very lovely. No, but as you can see this ain't our regular set, we had a power cut last night and now we're half cut up just isn't working. It really wasn't stressful this morning. Either way, it's gonna take more than that to stop us making this show, so we're gonna jump right in. And I'm gonna have to start the show with an apology because this first story will probably annoy you because boy, did it annoy me. If you watched yesterday's show, and you should, it was very, very good, then you'll know that a meaty chunk of the video was dedicated to Blue Scooty, the 13-year-old from Oklahoma who became the first person to ever beat Tetris. And the story just had everything. A delightful, talented underdog, a passionate, supportive community, and a game with a rich and wonderful history. The whole thing just gave me an incredibly warm, fuzzy feeling inside. But then I saw how Sky News here in the UK decided to report on the story. As a mother, I would just say, step away from the screen, go outside, get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. <laughs> Speaking of fresh air, let's get a look at the weather. And I'll give you a moment to stop rolling your eyes because seriously, how condescending can you get? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and unpack why this is so insulting, but I will caveat it by saying I've worked in newsrooms here in the UK. I've had colleagues like this person, and you know, for the most part, she's probably lovely. As a woman in media, she's likely worked incredibly hard to get where she is, and I'm sure she's normally super professional. It's why I've decided not to name her, because while she rightly deserves to be criticized, this is the internet, and things often turn into a disgraceful witch hunt way too quickly. And I imagine for her, this was just an innocent, funny little quip. I mean, this is television news we're talking about, so her demographic probably has the same outdated boomer opinions. It's not unlikely that this was her first time actually reading the script, which is inherently an issue when you decide to interject with your personal opinion, considering you probably have no clue what you're talking about. And that's an even bigger issue when you're a journalist speaking from a place of authority. When making yesterday's video, I did my research, and from that, I learned of the passion from the Tetris community. I learned of the insane skill and talent that it takes to play at that level, let alone doing it at 13. And I learned that just weeks after this kid made gaming history, he lost his dad. And maybe it's also on the producer for not feeding through or bothering to learn about this relevant information. And maybe I'd be more understanding if people had held their hands up and admitted their ignorance. But so far, no one has. And also, you're journalists. It's literally your job not to do that. And to be honest, the worst thing about that whole clip is just that smug, condescending tone. We who love gaming or any hobby that's considered nerdy have had to deal with this attitude way too much. I've been told by parents, teachers, whoever, that I was wasting my time playing games growing up. Now it's my job. In fact, gaming is the highest grossing entertainment industry on the planet. It has been for years. Like the audacity to say, Go outside. It's literally your job to sit in a building and report the news, what, five days a week? Why don't you go outside? You don't know what this kid does outside of gaming. Earlier in the program, they literally spent ages praising Luke Littler, another incredibly talented young person who reached the finals of the Darts World Championship. And obviously, the 16-year-old deserved all of that praise. And yes, he is only 16, I know. Yep, he looks old enough to be my dad. But last time I checked, you don't play darts outside, but there was no belittling his achievement, was there? Also laughingly saying beating Tetris is not a life goal is just so infuriatingly dismissive. Like, it's not an achievement being the first person to do something that millions of people have tried to do for over 30 years. It's not an achievement to have a world record in something you're truly passionate about. Who are you to say what is and isn't a life goal? If someone is happy and fulfilled and they're not hurting anyone else, what is the problem? Luckily, Scooty seems shielded from this boring, outdated mentality. He's part of a community that respects and admires him, and his grandparents prove that you can be older and still be chill. After all, they made him this sick sweater. Again, if this story has annoyed you, please don't go harass anyone online. We're all only little humans on a little floating rock flying through space. Let's spend our very limited existence bigging up people like Scooty. Oh, right, let's move on to a cool story now. A fan server for City of Heroes has been given an official license from its original owner, NCSoft. Now, you might not care 
about City of Heroes or MMOs at all, but man, this basically never happens. You see, City of Heroes officially shut down back in 2012, and clearly at the time, it wasn't performing amazingly, and you know, MMOs are expensive to maintain. But a game where you get to fly around as a superhero with all your buddies is quite appealing, so it had a small dedicated fanbase who were rather upset that it was closing down. Well, fast forward to 2019 and the original game code was uncovered, and from that the community made the fan server named Homecoming. Better yet, not only did it restore all of the original content, but it included new class features and updates too. It was completely free to play and funded by donations, so it's just chugged along since then. The problem though is that companies often don't respond well when people do these things, which is annoying because all people want to do is play their game. Often they're happy to pay for it, but the company just does nothing with it and then says screw you to the people actually making stuff completely off their own back. And it's an issue that kind of leaves players in limbo. If they enjoy a fan server, they never know when a company might decide to rock up and decide to just shut everything down. Suddenly, all of that time spent on your character was for nothing. Luckily, in a very rare turn of events, NCSoft have decided to not be villains. In fact, they've done the very honourable thing in granting Homecoming an official licence, which is just, I mean, pat on the back for that one. It means all those passionate fans and developers can keep enjoying Homecoming with some peace of mind. And I really hope this sets an example for other companies, just please follow suit. Officially licensed servers for Wildstar? Yes, please. In fact, I'm curious which dead game you hope this happens to next. Let us know in the comments down below. What do you want to play? And that's the show. It marks our first week back for the year. It didn't end exactly how we expected, but hey, we're still here. We put out videos Monday to Friday, so do subscribe so you don't miss out. If you want to learn all about Scooty's incredible achievement, you can check out yesterday's video somewhere around... Actually, I don't really know where it'll turn up, but click on it nonetheless. Otherwise, have a sick weekend indoors playing games, and we'll see you on Monday.